Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. Time USB sent out their 200 amp hour deep cycle lithium iron phosphate battery for testing and review. So today we're gonna to be talking about some of the specifications on this battery. I'm gonna show you guys the testing results that I did and then we'll be doing a teardown at the end of the video. Now what's interesting about this battery is even though it has a 200 amp hour sticker on the side and the owner's manual talks about it being a 200 amp hour battery, Online, this is rated at a 230 amp hour capacity or 2,944 watt hours. Now, for example, I compared this to a previous 200 amp hour battery I reviewed on the channel from Power Queen, and this has the same exact external dimensions, but it weighs about 16 pounds more. The Power Queen comes in at 50 pounds, and this one comes in at 66 pounds. So this one definitely has more batteries inside. Now this is a 12 volt battery with a nominal voltage of 12.8 volts. Now on the inside, there is a 100 amp BMS. Now what does that mean? That means you can discharge this battery at 100 amps continuous, meaning that you can pull 1280 watts from this battery at 12.8 volts. Now, unfortunately, there's not a 200 amp BMS in this. A lot of the larger batteries come with a larger BMS, so you could actually pull 2000 watts from it. So unfortunately, you can connect up a 2000 watt inverter to this, but you will not be able to pull the 2000 watts continuously. Now, I did not find anything in the owner's manual about low temperature charging protection. So if you plan to charge this below freezing, I would avoid purchasing this battery. Now, as for the dimensions of this battery, it is 20 and a half inches wide. It is nine and a half inches deep and it's around 8.75 inches tall. Now, because this battery is so heavy, it comes with two handles, one on each side, so it's nice to have these to carry it around. Now, looking at the top of the battery, you have your main positive and negative connection. These are epoxied in, they're very durable. And then it comes with two sets of these M8 screws, which have plenty of thread on them, so you can connect multiple connections up to each ring terminal. Now, as for the price of this battery, it's very competitive at $599. Now you can pick it up on their website or on Amazon for this current price. And I do have a $20 off discount code down in the video description. So if you guys watch this entire video and see how this performs and you like the performance, you guys can use that discount code to save an additional $20. Now just remember that this has a 100 amp BMS and no low temperature charging protection. So keep that in mind. That's probably why it's a little bit cheaper. So let's go ahead and jump into the actual testing results to see how this did. Now the first test was a discharge test that I did on the battery to get the actual capacity. So I charged it up to 14.6 volts, connected it up to my AC inverter and discharged it at a 0.2C rate. Now I was tracking all the power coming out of the battery via a shunt on the negative line. You can see this is what it looked like at the beginning of the test. Now within five and a half hours, my inverter was shutting off from low voltage. Now I was able to pull a total of 229 amp hours or 2,030 watt hours. So just a little bit short of that 230 amp hour rated capacity. Now, just a note here, my inverter shuts off at 11 volts and these batteries are designed to go a little bit lower than that. So I think I could have pulled full capacity if I had an inverter that went a little bit lower. Now in the next test, because the battery is dead, I wanted to see if we could charge this at the maximum charge rate. Now in the owner's manual, it shows that you can charge this at 100 amps, but it does have a recommended charging rate of 40 amps. So I connected up all my different chargers to total up to 100 amps, and I was able to charge this at 100 amps for about 10 minutes or so. Then I dropped down the charging rate to 40 amps because that was the recommended charge rate. So no issues charging up this battery at 100 amps or less. Now, once the battery had finished charging, I wanted to do my final test to see if I could pull 100 amps from this BMS without any issues. So I connected up my pure sine wave inverter and started discharging this at 1300 watts or around 105 amps. Now I set a stopwatch here and I was able to do this for over five minutes without any issues and the BMS kept going, it didn't shut off at all. Now I wanted to step this up to a full 2000 watt load or a little higher. So I connected 2100 watts up to this battery and that was pulling around 175 to 176 amps. Now I let this run for five minutes as well and the BMS did not shut off. So interesting enough, it does seem this can handle up to 2000 watts for at least five minutes without any issues. Now I wanted to check the temperature of the battery after all this, so I took my temperature gun and I was seeing around 75 degrees on most of the battery, which is room temperature. And on the left here, which I think where the BMS is located, I was getting around 87 degrees. Now as a tip here, whenever you connect your battery up to a large inverter, like a 2000 watt inverter, sometimes you'll see a spark there. Now to avoid this, you can use a large resistor. This is a 10 watt, five ohm resistor. If you put this in line on the positive connection, 
it will pre-charge the capacitors in the inverter and you will not get a spark. So looking at all those test results, we were able to pull almost full capacity on this. Like I said, I think I could have if I had a slightly different inverter and we were able to discharge this at the advertised 100 amps without any issues. So I'm really interested to tear this thing open. Now this is the first teardown that I've done on a battery like this. So let's go ahead and start the teardown. Close. Oh, there we go. Okay, there's the lid. Okay, so now that I have the lid off, you can see the main conductors here. You have a six gauge wire for the positive terminal, and then you have three 10 gauge wires in parallel for the negative terminal. Now these have ring terminals that are attached to the studs here and they are indeed crimped. It's hard to see that with the heat shrink here, but it's good that they are crimped on. Now it looked like there was this fiber board on top with this padding. Now I carefully took my X-Acto knife and went around and cut that loose. And you can see that we have the cells here and they are attached together uh, with these compression straps. Now it's gonna be a little challenge here. I'm gonna see if I can get this whole thing out. Okay guys, look at these cells, these are huge. I have one full cell here, two, three, and then there's a bottom one laying down. And what's interesting is they have their main positive and negative on the ends. This is a little bit different than what I've seen with other prismatic cells that have the positive and negative on the tops of the cells. Okay, so I pulled the battery out a little bit more so you can see this. So you have your cell one, two, three, and four, they're wired together in series. Now look at these bus bars, these are super thick. They are laser welded on the positive and negative terminals. You have your BMS leads here that sense the voltage of each of these modules. Um, they do have spacing between each one with padding and they are compressed together. Now it's super hard for me to pull the battery out because this fiber box in here is glued in there. The BMS is attached on the side so I don't have much room to work with. But you have your main negative lead here and your main positive lead, but look at this. This one's actually loose. Um, you know, it is screwed in there. I'll see if I can tighten that up. The positive one does not move at all. Let me see if I can get this fiberboard box out of here so we can look closer at the BMS. Okay, finally got it out. You can see it was basically double-sided taped to the bottom of the box. And that was a wrestling match to get this thing out. But uh, let's go ahead and take that off. Take that off. So now we can take a look at the BMS. Okay, so taking a closer look at the BMS, you have your main negative leads that are soldered on. Um, you do have a high temp sensor here that was attached to the batteries. That was good. Um, there is no low temperature sensor. Looking on the label here, it does have 100, meaning it's a 100 amp BMS. And then you have your individual voltage leads that go to each battery module, and that is glued in. Okay, so I want to do a little bit more testing here. I'm going to pull 2000 watts through this inverter and to see if I can get the BMS to actually shut off. So I wanna see how hot the wire gets and to see when this actually shuts off because a 100 amp BMS should have some sort of safety cutoff if you're pulling more than 100 amps. Okay, so we are pushing this inverter to the max so you can hear the fans turning on here. And I'm pulling 180 amps through that six cage cable. And uh, right there, 170 amps through the shunt. So um, let's just see if this is warm. Okay, yeah, that's, that's pretty hot already, guys. And we've only been going two and a half minutes, uh, almost three minutes. Okay, guys, the BMS is allowing 180 amps and it's been seven and a half minutes. I wanna see how hot this wire is now. That wire is currently 171 degrees. Okay, guys, we are at eight and a half minutes here. I wanna see how hot these 10 gauge wires are. 177 degrees. Okay, so the BMS does have a shut off after 11 minutes. Everything turned off at 11 minutes and it was pulling 180 amps for 11 minutes. Now, this got really hot inside. I'm glad it shut off. I was about to unplug this. Now, the max temperature that I got a reading on the BMS inside 
was 204 degrees right before it shut off. Okay guys, I got the battery here on the table. Let's talk about that torture test and also about the teardown results. Now for the torture test, I wanted just to see how hot those wires would get after pushing 180 amps through it for, well, basically until the BMS shut down. Now the BMS shut down because it got to an overheating temperature. It's a safety precaution. So it's good that it actually shut off from getting hot instead of actually burning something up. So that's actually a good sign. Now this battery comes with a 100 amp BMS and we were pushing it well beyond those means. So just understand that if you purchase this battery, you wanna make sure that you stay within the 100 amp level or you can do short bursts up to you know 200 amps or so, but we pushed 180 through for about 11 minutes. So. Now, as for the actual torture test results, the inside BMS and batteries did get warm, but they are silicone coated wires. So they can handle quite a higher temperature, but even though they can handle a higher temperature, you do get um, significant voltage drop due to the resistance in those wires as they heat up. I think as long as you stick to a 100 amp load on this battery, you should be fine. Now for the actual teardown results, um, we didn't see any major issues with this. The negative terminal was loose and that could have been from me tearing it down. It's hard to tell if it came that way or if from me pulling on the battery, it actually got loosened itself. We did see very good build quality inside and it did handle the advertised load without issues, but as we pushed it to a tortured 180 amps, um, that's where we started to see a lot of heat there. So what do I think about this battery? Well, this is a huge battery, it comes in at $599. And at that price of nearly 2,900 watt hours, that's around 20 cents a watt hour. So you get a ton of capacity for the price. And as long as you stay within the 100 amp level, the BMS and the wiring should do just fine. Now, I have a few other things I wanna talk about with the battery. First off, there is a five-year warranty on this battery from Time USB. They have a support email address that you can send an email to and they guarantee a 24 hour response time. Now you do have the ability to connect this together in uh, series connections up to four and you can connect it together in parallel up to four. So you could build a, quite a large battery bank with these batteries. Anyway guys, if you liked the video today, this was my first teardown and review video on a large battery like this. Please give me a thumbs up. Uh, very interesting results on the inside. So I'm kind of curious what your guys' thoughts are. So throw a comment down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully we'll see you guys in the next video.